Today's video is going to be a quick and simple tutorial on working with general MIDI files like those of old game soundtracks in Reaper or other modern DAWs, as well as some settings for VLC Media Player so you can get correct playback in that program for listening to MIDI files. This is a follow-up to my last video where I talked about the Korg Trinity Rack and uh, using that to record the Doom soundtrack through some actual MIDI hardware. But today we're going to be looking at how to do it in software and some tips and tricks and editing ideas. It's all going to be free plugins and I'll have links to everything you need down below in the description. So let's head on over to Reaper. So here's a brand new project in Reaper. I've just got my mic for recording purposes. And this is actually a very simple process. So I'm going to make a new track and load up the Bass MIDI VST. This is a very simple plugin that works well for playing back MIDI files. There's other sound font players. That is what this technology is all based around, is a sound font, which is uh, a set of instruments like uh, you would find on a hardware unit. In this case, I'm using an SC55 sound font. And to load that up, we're going to click on the sound font setup. And the default sound font, I'm going to, in my sound fonts folder, I'm going to load up this SC55 sound font. This is the best one I found for the SC55. It's relatively new and uh, quite true to the original hardware sound. So I will provide a link to that. You can get it for free. And this plugin also tends to work better than some other sound font plugins uh, at reading all the MIDI messages. So you don't really have to edit the files or do anything complicated. So it makes it really easy. I've got this set up. Um, that's all I'm gonna do for now. I'm not gonna change any other settings. And then I'm just going to duplicate this, and we'll continue to duplicate this out to 16 tracks. Here I've got 8 and 16. 16 channels should really cover any game soundtrack. Most of these MIDI cards only had up to 16 channels. I don't know if there were some that had more, but um, this will basically cover anything you throw at it. Next thing I'm going to do is load in a MIDI file and I have E1M7 from Doom here which is a cool track that shows off some of the different instruments we can get. And right off the bat once I load this in I have loaded in multi-channel mode. All of the program change and CC messages are baked into the MIDI so really all you need to do is load this up and it should automatically assign the correct instruments and play back everything correctly so uh, let's hope for the best here. So that worked out perfectly. Um, all the sounds worked right out of the box. Now I do notice on some of these, this one correctly says strings, but this one says it's still on piano one, but it's not really, and you can hear that uh, if I solo this saw wave track. So that's working just fine. We could see that all the panning, volume, and instrument changes were set up right away without us having to do anything. And uh, we're only using 12 tracks. This is actually one of the bigger arrangements for the Doom soundtrack. A lot of them are only five or six tracks. So this is one of the more intensive ones. So let's take a minute to appreciate the arrangement of this track and just go over some of the cool things because I've heard it many times, but uh, actually being able to look at every track and see what sound it is, is pretty cool. And these happen to be named because I edited this track with the names 
Um, so it won't always look like that. It may not have any names at all. But if you do name them and then save the MIDI file again, then as you can see, the names came up correctly when I opened it uh, as a fresh start. So we start with these strings here. And then we have multiple instruments coming in here. This is the Santor patch, which I'm not really sure what that instrument is. Um, it's a world instrument, I suppose. We have the Santor, Pizzicato, and Harp all playing a similar melody under the strings. And it all kind of sounds like one voice, but he's stacking different sounds here. So cool little trick. Then we have this main melody that makes up the bulk of the song, and we have the timpani giving us that great classic dungeon synth sound, uh, as well as a strings patch, a tremolo strings patch doing sustained notes, and the drum kit is just providing some cymbal hits and the snare arrangement. Now the last cool trick here, and I would not have been able to guess really what this sound was, but it is the guitar fret noise. It's like a fret squeak sound, and he's got them echoing back and forth with them panned separately, just doing these short little notes, and um, that's this cool effect near the end of the song. You can hear they fade out as well as it echoes on. So it's a, a cool way to get sort of a manual ping pong delay sound um, using an unusual source. But these are the clever little tricks that sometimes you have to uh, work in to these cool general MIDI songs. So that is really uh, the basics of what you need to know there for general MIDI in Reaper. It's really easy, but I haven't seen too many people talking about it. I kind of had to figure this out. Um, but there isn't really too much to it. So here is a file. This is from some of the Doom MIDIs I've found online. And we'll just see if this loads up correctly here. Again, I've got it on these different instrument channels, but it doesn't matter what this song is because there's a new program change message. So let's just see if it works here. So if we want to edit the instrument uh, or just check what it is, we can just double click on the MIDI file and it should open up with the piano roll. We can go over to this third tab, the events list, and that gives us all the raw data and we can change these values. So in this case, it just says piano one. They all come up as that. So ignore that. Uh, but the value is 92. So that's going to be our voice. Uh, that is what the patch is and these are all you have to add one to that so if it's 92 this is really 93 bowed glass like a glass harmonica that's cool this one here we can see piano one value 38 that should be 39 which is synth bass one that sounds correct and the drum kit is value zero so if you want to um, fix any of these tracks 
they should be value zero if you want the general MIDI drum kit. Let's change this to uh, patch 53, hit enter. So you can edit the voices of these if you want to remix them or or if you want to send different information to a hardware unit like I did in my last video. So that's all you really need to know editing MIDI's in a DAW. Let's go over to the VLC media player. I use this um, for playing back files and it's good and it's free. And it does support MIDI playback. So we want to go to our preferences over to the audio tab. Go to show settings all in the bottom left. You want to scroll down to input and codecs, audio codecs, and fluid synth. That is where you can select your sound font. I've got many sound fonts, but I like this SC55 one. Open that up, and then you can play files, MIDI files, directly in VLC. Um, no problem, and you can use any sound font you want. So that's cool. Just hit save, and then we're good to play back MIDI in VLC. One more point, since I didn't mention it in my last video on MIDI hardware, if you want to send this MIDI data to an actual hardware synthesizer like I have, you can just click on this box here on the track and set your MIDI output. I have mine going through my interface, so that's sending to the MIDI there, and you can send to original channels. Sometimes you may need to manually select the channels. If the channel information is already encoded, it may not need it, but um, that's something to try and you'll need to do that for every MIDI track you have. Just open this up and send this to my interface, which will be sent to the hardware, and then you'll need a new track recording the audio output from your hardware into uh, Reaper again. But it works fine. Hopefully this is helpful in your MIDI adventures, and if you have any questions, you can leave them down in the comments or come on over to my Discord. I will be doing some more game soundtrack arrangement with old MIDI hardware in the future, so stay tuned for that. And as always, like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video.